Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions uh, where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are continuing with our chapter 5 of set B and shall be looking forward to have some more questions being discussed as a part of this particular tutorial and handle them better. So let's move on to the next question and the first question for this tutorial that is question number 35 and it says uh, which of the following are the product risk? A very gentle reminder of any risk which is associated with the process of making the product or impacts the project directly, the timeline, schedule, budget, people, resources, etc. We put them into project risk and any such risk which impacts the quality of the product or impacts the end user when the product is being used, uh, we refer to them as product risk. Now this becomes a very simple definition to quickly differentiate between the list of items given to you to understand which one is product and which one is project. Now here the question is about product risk. So options are option A says scope creep. Of course scope creep is related to project activities and certainly impacts the project. A B, poor architecture, as a poor architecture of any particular product would certainly lead to, uh, you know, incompleteness or poor performance of the application. And it's directly uh, one of the product, product attribute, thus becomes a product risk. C, cost cutting, of course, a project related activity. If cost is less, uh, people uh, will not be able to complete the project. And D says poor tool support, again, tool support is related to project activities, shall be uh, one of the project risks. And finally, response time too long, which is directly a performance issue and performance issue is a product related attribute as well as quality characteristic, thus becomes a product risk. So keeping it very, very straightforward and simple to the point, the right answer to this particular question is B, that is poor architecture and E, response time is too long. And again, there were five options. So that is where we were supposed to select uh, two right answers here. So be careful with that at any point of time. Let's move on to the next question. The next question we have for you is question number 36. And it says, which of the following is not a valid purpose for a test report? Test reports are written uh, in two different ways. That is test progress report, test summary report. And test progress reports are generally created multiple times. And the uh, summary report is created once at the end, which is also called as test completion report. But as it is a single statement, like what is not true, then I can just uh, read the options because they can talk about anything else as well. Like what kind of formality, what kind of audience, when should we create it and sort of things. All right. So let's check the options out. Option A says uh, tracking test progress and identifying areas that require further attention. Indeed, that's one of the valid characteristic of writing a test report because this is what uh, is the major purpose of test progress report where we consistently monitor and uh, help other stakeholders know about it. And at the same time, uh, it helps us to understand the action items which are required to be taken into account. Option B says uh, providing information on the test executed, their result and any issues or defects found. Yeah, there are several elements which you have covered in the syllabus that what all uh, inputs can be included as a part of the test summary report. So yes, uh, the elements are test cases, test, ex test case execution, the blockers, the risk status, the defect, etc. Option C says uh, providing information about each defect, such as step to reproduce it. Uh, we simply have to differentiate between the defect report and the test progress report. Option C is talking about information like detailing the defect, including the steps to reproduce, which certainly means one thing that you're talking about a defect report. But when it comes to test progress report or test summary report, which is test completion report as well, we do not detail it. It's just a high level statistical information <clears throat> which talks about that uh, what happened in a particular period of time and uh, what are the statistics and numbers related to that. So we don't have the details uh, to that extent that how to reproduce a defect should also be included. So let's move on to option D. Option D says uh, providing information on testing plan for the next period. Yes, that's one of the straightforward component of uh, test progress report. It talks about determining even that what's your plan for the next iteration or next phase, uh, what you are planning for. So I think uh, this makes again, again our job very, very easier and simpler that uh, the one which is contradicting 
with the information of test progress report is the answer because the question is about what is not correct about test reports. So keeping it straightforward, the right answer for this particular question is C, that is providing information about each defect, such as step to reproduce it, is not a valid purpose of test report. For that, we can always create a defect report, which can give all the details. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, the next question we have is question number 37, and it says uh, the user reported a software failure. An engineer from the support team asked the user for the software version number where the failure was observed. Based on the version number, the team resembled all the files that made up the release. This later allowed a developer to perform analysis, find the defect, and fix it. Which of the following enabled the above activity to be performed by the team? So uh, indeed, the point is, there's a catch in the entire question given to you, and the catch is version number. That means uh, everything around whatever we discussed is revolving around something called as a specification that is version number. And version number certainly comes as a part of configuration management. So all they wanted to help you understand is that how a version number is very important and can be helpful for a team to derive anything related to it, anything relevant to it, because just by giving one particular failure report, by letting them know the build version, they can find the related artifacts and from there they can really get to know an easier way of doing root cause analysis and help them fix the defect and do many other related activities. So indeed, uh, that's something very, very straightforward. Let's look at the option. Option says uh, A, risk management, B, test monitoring and control, C, whole team approach and D, configuration management. So options are also very, very helpful because uh, that's highlighting to you that whole team approach is not what we are talking about. Test monitoring and control results into test progress reports and matrices. Risk management should have at least once used the word risk to give you some kind of guidance. So put together, the right answer for this particular question is D, that is configuration management, where configuration management is the subject which talks about version number, unique identification, history management, and traceability. Four major things which we always take care of. Let's move on to the final question of this particular chapter, and uh, that is question number 38. It says, uh, <clears throat> consider the following defect report for a book lending system. And uh, there's a report right next to you, it says uh, defect ID, then title, unable to return a book, severity is there, priority is empty, uh, environment, Windows 10, Google Chrome. So priority is empty for now, what we just observed. Description says, when attempting to return the book using the book return feature, the system does not register the return and the book remains checked out for the user. Steps to reprodu reproduce, uh, that is log into the book lending system as a user who has checked out a book, click on the book return button for the book that has been checked out. System does not register the book and uh, book remains checked out. Expected result, uh, the book should be returned and no longer appear as checked out by the user. And actual result, the book remains checked out to the user and is not registered as returned in the system. Attachments, empty, okay, empty list. So which of the following is most likely to help the developer reproduce the failure quickly? So I think uh, number one thing, we have got a lot of information and as being reported, I can understand the priority can be empty at this point of time. But uh, for now, every single information looks pretty important, but there are few lacks here. For example, I don't know the environment. I do not know the version. Uh, I just know what is the defect, uh, what are the test cases, the steps to reproduce the expected and actual result and severity. These are the information what is given to us, but having this highlighted that some of the things like environment, version, build, etc., uh, we don't have it. So we can understand, right? We're looking at the report itself, we should start analyzing that if I'm the developer, what exactly I would need to have. Or if I'm a tester, what exactly I generally should specify as minimum information. So both the ways, all you need to do is get the answer, right? no matter what you behave as, okay? So as you read the report, try to keep your answers ready in terms of uh, how exactly people might be looking at it and what exactly would be required to do at that point of time. So half of your job is done. All you have to do is read the options and conclude the answers, right? So let's do that. Let's move on to <clears throat> options here. Option A says information about which user 
and uh, which book the issue affect the description section. See, uh, again, the question is about which of the following uh, most likely to help the developer reproduce the failure. So what information in this given information is most relevant that would help a developer to reproduce it? So the first option looks uh, appropriately correct. The reason is, uh, if you see, it says clearly that which user and which book the issue affects is very, very particular, very, very specific. For example, in these steps, as we have written it, uh, it clearly says login as that user who has checked out a book. So he can just use that particular credential at the same time. But don't worry, there are no credentials specified. It's just being understood as a, uh, you know, understanding that uh, in the steps it is written login as a user who has checked out a book right so he will log in as a user as a checked out a book so it will be very particular and at the same time this person is trying to uh, talk about which book uh, will be affected so the one which is checked out should be uh, returned there's a button there so all the detail are very very uh, crisp very very to the point and that would help a developer to reproduce the defect right let's look at option b option c b says uh, filling the missing value for the priority field no at this point of time the question is not about what is missing uh, the question is about what would be most relevant to reproduce the defect so priority does not help us to reproduce the defect right and after being accepted then we can give a priority that's a secondary thing but the question has to have relevancy with that of the options okay having priority is really good but that's not the question is let's go to c of c says uh, adding memory dumps and database snapshots taken from each step described in the steps to reproduce section to uh, the attachment section See, again, attachment section is not uh, something which is really important because although some of this information uh, may be of value, adding the memory dumps and database snapshots after each step will be too much because most of these artifacts will contain useless information for the developer and make the report less readable. So point being made is we just want something very, very relevant that will help us to see the defect not about something which would be too much for us to uh, struggle around and then be confused at point or maybe uh, maybe something limited would also be enough. So point being made here is what is that crisp information what a developer needs to have at least in order to see the defect and understand it. So these are to support further to do the root cause analysis and all. But to reproduce a defect, this would be most relevant. That is option A. Let's go to option D. Option D says, Repeating the same test case for different environment and writing defect report for each of them separately. Yeah, why not? The question is about asking which is the most relevant step to do it, not about how we can do better, right? Right? How we can better write a defect report. So certainly that would be a tester's job to continue doing that. Uh, he will try to replicate this defect into other environments and then support it uh, with updating the defect report or adding additional defect reports. But the question is about which step in this given report is useful for reproducing a defect. So that's not something what we should pick up. So some options would be uh, really great uh, to tell you that yes, this is important. But the point is, do not lose the context and concentration on what is the question. Okay, if you go wrong there, that is where people go wrong. And people don't even remember or realize that why did I go wrong? Okay, so your lack of attention would contribute a lot. So let's move on. The right answer for this particular question is A, that is adding information about which users and which books the issue affects to the description section would be great and most relevant to help developer reproduce the defect. Right? Makes sense. So thank you so much for watching this particular video. And uh, should we have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.